<laughs> so, my name is Stephen Peterson, and I'm going to screw this up. Right. Okay. So, here's the way I describe myself. My wife is here. My princess. My little princess. My I like to talk. Right, is that fair? I, I like to talk. And so I have a podcast because I like to talk. I am an accountant by trade, I was, and I've been the controller and CFO of a whole bunch of companies for a long time, and about a week ago, I retired. <laughs> was it popular in the company? <laughs> All right. That is really close. All right, now I'm going to try. Okay. Um, so, anyway, um, I like to talk. I love interviewing people. I love the people that I get to talk with. I'm so fortunate that I have met some incredible people, and I hopefully I've brought some incredible people to you and give you some insight on some people. I'm going to talk about them today. I'm going to talk about know yourself, know success. Because, and I guess there's a common theme. I didn't expect everybody else to uh, steal my thunder and, and talk about the same thing, but it's really not my thunder, it's really your thunder. And when you figure out what you are meant to do, what you are good at, what you like to do, you can have a lot of success, right? And that's what I'm going to talk about. So I'm going to give you some background on this. So I've done 192 interviews, 193 comes out tomorrow, and it is really good. I mean, it's like really good. 194 I think is even better because it's personal for me, but really, really cool. And so this is probably tough to see, but this is... Uh, kind of the themes of the speakers that I've interviewed, kind of what they, what their themes were. So most of them were retail art people. That's generally what they were, right? Next are sellers, um, selling services. So, you know, people selling, uh, you know, uh, John Moss. People selling different kinds of services. So I've had a lot of those kind of interviews. Online arbitrage is next. Wholesale, private label, bulk, other channels, uh, eBay. I've had a few drop shippers and then some merch, just a little bit. But you can kind of see that, and you would expect that, right? And if you think about this business, that's kind of where people start and where they try to get to, right? And it's a little harder, so you would see them go down. These are the trends that I'm seeing for the people that I've interviewed, and I don't think there'll be any surprise here. I'm seeing less retail arbitrage. I think that makes sense, right? Uh, I think uh, it was last night, we went back to the hotel, it was late, and I was reading the Wall Street Journal, and that's what I like to do. Anyway, they project this year that 8,000 retail stores will close. 8,000! There have been 2,600 so far this year close. Well, that makes it a little harder for retail art, right? Common sense would tell you that. There's a thing like uh, inauthentic claims. There are people worried about the receipts. That makes it a little harder, right? So you're seeing less retail art. Where's Uncle Jackie? He would tell you, though, it's not dead, is it? It's far from it. And I'm not suggesting that. I'm just saying it's harder, and the people that I've interviewed, the successful sellers that I've talked with, we have seen less of that trend, and I think that kind of makes sense. More online arbitrage. Anyone want to guess what, why there's more online arbitrage? Bob Steele will tell you why. Uh, well, that, that, that's kind of it, right? You know, less retail art, but there's like tactical arbitrage, right? You get scraping tools. And they get easier, right? They're easier to use. There's guys selling lists, right, of tactical arbitrage stuff. So it gets easier. So you're going to see more of that. The difference is everybody has access to that, right? So is that really a long-term game plan? I'm not certain. But you can make money at it today, right? Well, that's for sure. You see more wholesale. Um, the wholesale guys. You know uh, Dan and Eric Benners, right, the wholesale formula? They teach amazing stuff, right? Their program is basically use Price Checker 2, pull up your Amazon store, run it backwards, it'll tell them the vendors to go look at, they can find the profitable product, send a note to them saying, hey, I want to sell this product, boom, you start selling. That's the model. All right, they'll tell you that. It's pretty simple. <coughs> Not that simple. They make it look simple. But that's why you're seeing more wholesale. And, you know, I love wholesale. We, we do lots of wholesale. We bundle. But you're going to see more and more of that. And that's what I'm seeing in these sellers. They're moving through here. Um, more private label, right? You're seeing the lead on back there, more private label. Why not? You want a brand. You want to own a brand. Uh, 
you want to sell your brand, right? You create a private label brand, this uh, this whipped cream or hand cream, whatever it is, you can sell that, right, Sam? Not a bad apples, right? Somebody comes and offers you 10 million bucks, it's on, right? um, Lots of eBay. It's interesting to see eBay have their little resurgence, um, although I think they missed the revenue. But you're seeing more people go on eBay. Anyone want to guess why? Restrictions, right? Uh, it's a B plan because what happens when your Amazon store will get suspended? And almost all the people I've interviewed have been suspended. Most, not not all. A lot of them have, and a lot of them don't say it. Because it used to be, you know, devastating. Now people, you know, it's just part of the business. But you're seeing it's a B plan, and it's a good B plan, right? It's it's a safe B plan. Joe Lister, right? That allows you to take your Amazon stuff, move it over. Pretty simple process. So you're seeing more of that, and I think that that trend will continue. And then other channels. Um, Barb was here about Jet, their partner. Um, then you have Walmart, um, although Walmart still is infancy, right? Lots of customer service issues, they're not prepared for it. Lots of pricing issues, you gotta figure that out. Um, and I'm seeing a lot of that. So these are what I'm suggesting are the traits that you all need to have. You need to be, dare I say, good at all of them in order to be successful, okay? And this is hard because, you know, not everybody can be a seller, as Chris pointed out, right? There are people that are meant to sell services. There's nothing wrong with that. And I know a lot of guys, uh, you know, Lee Ron's back there, him and Andy, they're killing it in services. That's what they do. And yet, they're a huge private label sellers. So, these, I'm going to go through each one of these. Data investigator, it's hard to read. Data investigator, strong negotiator, operations manager, a noticer, which I'm a noticer, a uh, big thinker, and a visionary. Those are the traits that I'm suggesting that you have to have in order to be successful selling in e-commerce. You just have to be good at them, but if you could figure out the one that you're great at, go all in, go 10x, as Grant Cardone would say and you're going to have incredible success. Outsource the rest, because every single one of these things you can outsource. So let me give you some examples. All these people I've interviewed, and all those interviews are on ecommercemomentum.com, um, and I'll, I'll give you a couple links about that. But all these people, let me just tell you about a few of them. These are what I call data investigators, right? So Bob Steele, right back there. I love Bob. Next to him is his Australian friend, Alex Moss, right? You guys all know tactical arbitrage? Okay. These guys scrape data. Alex created this program, scrapes amazing data. It can tell you all the products you want to sell. It used to be pull up Home Depot, go into tools, run the program, and it would scrape Home Depot site, pull it up, go out to Amazon, compare the prices. You could sort, parse the data, and boom, you could see profitable items, place your online order, and life is good, right? Pretty, pretty simple. That's amazing stuff. But now, he's doing wholesale backwards, just like uh, Price Checker 2. They're doing everything Bob's an expert at. Bob was a purchasing manager, director, whatever, for a company for 30 plus years. He understands data. He understands the relationships with companies and how to get to them. He's a data investigator. Uh, Quincy Lin, I think his interview comes out tomorrow, his, his second interview. And shoes, anybody sell shoes? At the hands glove. So shoes changed, right? The model changed a little bit, right? It used to be pretty specific. We've all had to adopt that or adapt. Um, Quincy is probably one of the best at it. And it's amazing what he's been able to do and figure it out because he is a data guy. Right? That's his thing, not Steve's thing. REA Shineline. Everybody know REA? He was here last year. I didn't see him today. One of the smartest guys you'll ever meet. I mean, literally, one of the smartest guys you'll ever meet. Amazing at analyzing things. Not Steve's skill, but it is his skill. He has figured it out. Um, Dang Lee, if you guys don't know Dang Lee, you will. Dang Lee, while he's a really smart guy and he's a study, he studies a lot, he's actually studying all of us. And he's studying what you're doing, and he's kind of emulating it, and he's having incredible success because he's taken his data of you and I and use it for his business. And it's a really great story. So that's a data investigator. I think those are pretty good representatives. Strong negotiators. Now, 
I love Eddie's picture. This is a great picture. It's like, where did you get that? I'm like, I love that picture. So that's Eddie Levine. Eddie's you know, philosophy is, hey, you can't always just get the cheapest price, right? Because you can get that deal once, but getting it again is probably pretty difficult. If a vendor has a choice of dealing with Sam, who's going to beat him down on the price, and then he sees John, and John's going to give him a reasonably fair deal, he's going to go back to when he has the next deal. He's going to go the path of least resistance. And so that's Eddie's point. Bring him value. Don't only negotiate on the price. Hey, I want to buy your stuff, and I'm going to do this. Hey, I can help you fix your problem. Right? You're hearing a lot of that stuff about wholesale. Go to a vendor. You know, we were in ASD, and uh, the guy said, you're the 50th Amazon person to come up and talk to us. Right? What are you going to do different than every other person that's here? But if you go up, and this is Eddie's deal, you go up and you negotiate and solve their problems, you'll have a lot of success. And so that's a lot more about negotiation than just trying to beat them down on price. You're looking for a long-term relationship, you should, or you should be. So there's the wholesale boys right there in the center. And what was cool about these guys, you know, they have a program and they have all this you know, stuff. What they did is, so Monica's buying shoes and she's paying the same price I am, right? And so really, what's the difference? The only thing we can compete with on him is on his price. Here's what these guys are different. They're saying, okay, how much is the shipping part of the price that I'm buying? They then go and get their own shipping and negotiate a lower price. So let's say they pay half the shipping price. If it was 100 bucks, they only paid 50. So they have an advantage over Monica by $50. And that little bit of an advantage will give them pricing power when you're doing scale, right? And so you might have paid the exact same price, but because the shipping price was lower, they got a better price, therefore they can drop the price and make the same profit. That's a strong negotiator. So there's the uh, young guns, the crazy ones. Those guys, if you don't know them, they're crazy. I've had them on twice, each one of them. And the story goes, I don't know, it was two years ago, three years ago, we were going to Vegas, to ASD. Was it two years ago? Probably two years ago. We're going to Vegas, and we get on the plane, and there's no seats, right? It's uh, Southwest. We get on, and I hear my name. Steve, and we're in Baltimore. I'm like, who, who can know me? And it was Matt and Tom. And they were saving a seat, so I sat between them, and we started drinking. And so, <laughs> you know these guys, that's what happened. Anyway, I'm a middle light guy, so I was pretty safe, but they were drinking, whatever. And we started talking about chocolate or something like that. And I, I'm like, hey, I found this great thing, you guys want to go in? Matt goes to Todd, pull up our account. Todd puts this thing out and starts to, and I'm like, hey, it's only two bucks for whatever, or whatever, Lindor chocolates, whatever. He's like, what are we paying? Uh, 50 cents. Um, six pallets available. And they bought them all. As we're, I'm like, are you kidding me? You know, How do you compete with that, right? These guys have developed that relationship that I can't touch, you can't touch, because they have worked on that deal for so long, and they bought it. And how do you compete with it? That's a strong negotiator. We go. Operations manager. So, yeah, one person, what are you going to say? You know, well, it is. It's, it, it's a great story because Dan was a, a regional I don't know, district manager for a drugstore. Okay? So, you know, when I interviewed him, I remember making a connection. He's like, I've never made that connection before. And it's true. Dan's business, what I appreciated about him, he was a retail art guy doing shoes for eBay, right? Way back in the day. Now, everybody knows how easy it is to ship on eBay, right? Sure. <laughs> Especially years ago, right? But what was so cool is he figured that out, transfers it over to Amazon, and he's in opening his third location. Correct. Third location. That's an operation manager. That's somebody who has figured it out that he can come and put that into place. That's a skill set. Uh, Dave Matthews. Uh, now Dave has two partners. And what I love about Dave, uh, one of just one of the sweetest guys you'll ever meet in your life. But his two partners, and he's married, uh, I want to be careful how I say this, um, but he's got these two guys that are, he's friends with, and he uses the term, these are his business partners, love. His relationship with them is a love relationship. He doesn't, it's, there's trust, but he loves them. And, and I think that's just so cool. They have different skill sets. So Dave, I think, is the product picker. He's got a guy who runs the retail store, for that retail store, and then he's got a guy who handles finance. They buy tractor trailer loads of your and my stuff from Amazon 
directly. Track their trailer loads, bring it into their warehouse, sort it, resend a whole bunch of that stuff right back to Amazon. That's how your stuff gets back on Amazon. Oh wait, this stuff goes to eBay, right? Oh wait, this stuff comes to our retail store. They're opening their second retail store. And when it's even less valuable, it goes in a banana box. They have one of those banana box stores. Genius. There is no waste. Nothing. Everything gets sold. Really smart. Jason Clark, far over. Jason lives in Vegas. Great guy. Two million plus in sales this year. But what I love about Jason, he's a trade show guy. He's in Vegas. There's a convention center with a trade show every week. Yeah, every day. John's probably talking at them all every day, right? <laughs> and and but what's so cool is he's figured out a process. He sets goals, right? You know? He sets real goals. He can hold himself accountable. He has a process. I bring it in. Blah, 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 blah. Real operations guy. Chris Lynn, one of my newer uh, interviews, his theme is 10K on eBay. 10K on eBay. And he, I think he's up to three or 4,000 SKUs. He's going to get 10,000 SKUs, which is a huge deal. I've got 4,000 SKUs. I know what the deal is. To get to 10, it's incredible. But he's processed. I think he told me one of his processes, he has redone 61 times to figure it out. But when you when you talk with them, there's no doubt in my mind he'll get to 10,000 SKUs live on email. Jesus. And I say Nathan Simons, that's Nate. Slam is Andy's nephew in the middle. And Leron will tell you, Nathan is an amazing, amazing kid. He's in Florida right now. I call him kid because he's under 30. And um, yeah, I've got kids older. But what's so cool about him is he runs Andy and Leron and his business. Nobody knows it. Real quiet about it. They have 13 VAs. They've got all kinds of things going. And Nathan quietly does it. By the way, he's in Florida running it right now. They're there for three weeks. That's an operations manager. That's what he is. He's not up here talking in front. That's Andy's thing, right? We all know Andy or Leron. That, that's what they do. But that's what makes him successful. So if that's you, there's nothing wrong with that. And I have more of a story. So here's my noticer. I'm, I'm a noticer. I really am. This is, I consider this my superpower, by the way. So Leron, here's Corn. Great friend. Leron, <laughs> every time it happens, Something new comes out, and I'm like, oh man, this is the coolest thing. Leron's been using it for two weeks prior. <laughs> I'm not exaggerating. Every single time, I'm always like, hey, wait, you didn't see this? Like, I'm the smart guy. I'm sending him an Indian. They're like, yeah, we've been using it for two weeks. <laughs> Leron's, that's his thing. He doesn't miss a thing. And to me, that's a superpower, a skill set. It's it, the way he's wired. He just is that guy. It's a great story. Chris Green, right? I have a problem. I'm not happy about that. But <laughs> let's face it. He's a visionary. He's a noticer. He doesn't miss a thing. Um, I guess I should say this, too. You can be in a couple different categories, right? Again, you have to know how to do all these things. You have to be great at least at one of them. You should be good at them all. And some people are outliers. And I think Chris would be an outlier who's good at many of them. That's awesome. That's Chris. That's not Steve. Lori Barsby, if you, haven't, if you haven't seen her, I think Chris just did an interview with her a couple days ago. Smart young lady. And what's cool about her, the reason I call her a noticer, she describes it. Listen to the interview with her. She's on the shower, sitting down on the shower. I don't know why she told me that. Solving a problem with her feet because she was a dancer. And I'm like, please don't give me these visions in my head, right? I'm like, come on, you know, go, go, go. But what was cool is she figured out a product. She invented a product right there on her shower floor. She noticed there's a problem. Wasn't successful in launching the product for a lot of reasons for a long time. Now she's killing it. And she's added, I think, seven, eight, nine other products to her line because she's a noticer. She pays attention to that stuff. So if you are a noticer, if you've seen things, you can solve a problem. Chris talked about going up to hear uh, five people. Dan Norton tells me three people. He hears three people say the same thing. That's a business right there. And so I say to Andy for last, because Andy you know, is such a great friend. But what, you know, he's killing the private label. He's three and a half million dollars on private label this year, no doubt, right? But what Andy's smart is his business was growing incredibly. So what does he do? He recognizes his nephew, Nathan, and brings him into the business as a full partner. Full partner. 
huge business, already established, brings him in as a full partner because he sees that Nathan is going to bring him the value, quite frankly, his shortcomings. His attention span is worse than ours, right? Then, he's not done. He sees this little guy from New York, sitting back there, who, really smart, really figures things out, can advance their business forward. It brings them in as a full third partner. Gives up huge amounts of his business because he noticed the talent in Leroy and noticed what he can do. That's a skill. That's a, that's a super, super hard. Yet, he sells three and a half million dollars on private labor. Big thinkers. My big thinkers, right? Big ideas. I love these guys. Oh, did I go too far? Oh. Oh, I'm not doing that. Watch. Ready? One. Chris doing it. Stop. So my big thinker. So we'll talk about the Churnland brothers. The Churnland. Very difficult name to say. Fourth generation business. Great great grandfather created this cool heating and air conditioning business tools or whatever. Still in business today, huge manufacturing company, huge brick and mortar. They sell the brick and mortars. Andrew, the brother down at the bottom. That's where Andrew, the guy down at the bottom, trust me, bottom right. He takes and brings them to the e-commerce world in a big way. I mean, just brings it out there. And he personally, I think he's going to sell six or seven million dollars on Amazon, in addition to working in his now father's business, Will, his younger brother, the guy, I don't know what country he's in, he said when I interviewed him last, he was like, uh, yeah, I'm going to South America for the winter, because they're like living in Wisconsin or you know, somewhere up there. He's going for the winter, he's like 26 years old. And his big thing now is, I think he'll do over 10 million in sales, he is bringing brands to Amazon, or he's selling your brand to Amazon and makes the little big in between, that little bit of interest in between, and it's a lot of interest when you sell a lot. Smart, big thinker. Brett Bartlett, I don't know if everybody knows Brett Bartlett, he's hooked up with Jim Cochran. Brett Bartlett, what I love about Brett's interview is he has a shipping division, and he has a photography division in his company, because they do lots of private label, they do lots of other kinds of sales, they're in California right by the docks, clothing. And so he has the e-boys, he calls them, in his eBay business, and they use the photography business division, and they use their shipping division. Then his private label uses those same two divisions, and he's got a group of people who have their own clothing line that work for him. And they're all using the same division. Real big thinker, he just uses the same tools he already has established in different divisions in his business. And that takes some big thinking. That takes, that's a big operator. Sam Cohen, right? We all know Sam. Um, big thinker, right? Business is huge. Not satisfied uh, selling uh, DVDs explodes out there. So one of the cool stories, if you don't know the story, it's a good story. Harry Potter DVD set. I remember going to Sam's old warehouse. I haven't been to his new warehouse. I was at the old one. It was crazy, right? Stuff everywhere. Just, But he shows me this Harry Potter thing. He's like, this is a cool story, dude. Harry Potter was selling for the pack that he had was selling for nothing. But he was able to open it up, take one out, and made a ton of money. Right? Smart guy to figure that out. Looking at the B, the C, and the D plan way ahead of us and figuring out that, hey, the market's going to change, things are going to change, I'm going to have a plan to handle it. You get a big thinker. Greg Merchant, and that's Brian Young. Brian Young's a big bookseller, uh, great story. But I really have Greg in here for this one because Greg, Greg buys tractor trailer loads of books, 52 Gaylords, I forget how, how, many, how much it weighs, he told me all these crazy stats, from Salvation Army, uh, Goodwill. Now think about how many times have you been in a, uh, those of us who used to scan books, been in and scan those books? This is junk. He's getting tractor trailer loads up. 52 Gaylords, brings them out, puts them on this thing he calls the dumper. It dumps them up on this thing, onto a conveyor. He has people that flip and do all this crazy stuff. In the old days, he used to cut the ends off the books, put the recycling, and got some paid some money. Said, eh, this isn't a good business. He uh, and he would sell the other good books on Amazon, right? He then said, eh, I'm going to recycle. Let me do this dollar book swap. He, he hooked up with a guy who showed him how to sell books for a dollar. 
There were weekends holding twenty thousand dollars in cash, selling books for a dollar. Books that he couldn't sell on Amazon because they're just not worth sending in the fees or whatever. And he's got the Easter money. If you follow him at all, he's had the Easter money there, saying that he does all these crazy things. Well, that's not good enough. Now he's opening the first of his nationwide bookstores. And if you spend time with Greg, you'll realize he's going to open up a nationwide set of bookstores because he believes in what he does. And that's why I call him a good thinker. I hit that button. So I guess my point there is that a big thinker looks for that problem that's going to arise and comes up with a solution for when you do it. So here are my visionaries, right? And a couple of the visionaries are here. Whoa. Whoa. Well, no, I had to write this down because this dude is, well, first of all, he's old, so I want to make sure we understand. He is old. Um, I think I'm a little bit older, but not much. But you guys know that John Lawson sells stuff, right? I don't know if he ever talks about that. He has, I think that's on PA for how long? Yeah. He sells stuff. Most people see him talk, and he's always talking about some, what's the name of your book? Kick ass. He's always kick ass. On him. But he sells stuff. Still. To this day. He talked at, when we were in Vegas, uh, he didn't want to hang out with us because he got to go to IBM and they had, who was the concert with? There was some rock con or some music thing that you got to sit in the front row and you'd rather hang out with them than come to dinner with Maroon 5. Instead of coming to hang out with us, I can't imagine why he didn't want to come hang out with us. Um, but John is a visionary, right? So he's out there talking to Amex and IBM and Stamps.com. You know, think about Stamps. But those guys are doing stuff, so he gets to see all that. The liquor marketing, that sounds cool. That sounds like fun. Habitude, JVs. My point is, is that he's out there on the pulse Looking ahead, he's talking to IBM who's talking about really cool things that we are going to eventually use, and, and he's got his finger on the pulse. That's a vision. He's out there. Um, Randy Reynolds. Randy is there somewhere. Love Randy. White. When I interviewed Randy the first time, it was, was so cool because he was talking about, hey, think stocks. I have a portfolio approach to my inventory. I want to ride the shoes when it makes sense, and I'm going to sell in the summer pool supplies, and I'm going to you know, get Christmas toys and all that stuff. Really smart. I was like, wow, that guy's really smart. I bring him back on, and he blows me away. Now he's taking a portfolio approach to the markets he sells on. Hey, when Amazon's up, that's great. But what about this Walmart thing? Hey, maybe I can do this. Or maybe there's an eBay opportunity, and maybe there's some wholesale for eBay, and his wife can help with that. I'm like, dude, he's figured it out. True visionary. Brian Grant, young guy. She's probably 30 years old. I mean, Captain like me. Um, starts his own Amazon business three years into it, same operations manager running it, Ryan's able to step away. Ryan wants to get into private label. He didn't want to create a product, so what does he do? He goes on Empire Flippers, right? You guys know who Empire Flippers? Okay, you can buy websites, you can buy apps, you can buy Amazon businesses out on Empire Flippers, and there's a couple other ones out there. He buys a private label, Shopify store, the product, their inventory, they're not on Amazon, they will be on Amazon. So he jumped ahead, way ahead, and brought this product, and he's going to bring it to Amazon, and he already has his own warehouse, so he has all that opportunity figured out, and he's able to take advantage of it. To me, that's a visionary. Jeff Combs, I don't think Jeff's here yet, he's on his way. But, you know, you guys know that uh, Seller Labs, that they have, a, they have a book business, the book software? Most people don't know that, right? You know, it's Feedback Genius, right? Now you know the scope. They keep reinventing themselves, and they keep figuring out these things, and staying ahead of it, solving problems for you and I, because we have problems. Look, Dallas Moore, young, uh, you don't really hear much from Dallas, he's real quiet. Dallas uh, was a used car sales guy, selling antiques, doing whatever, figured out, hey, this eBay business is good, gets into Amazon, does some private label, figures that out. What I love about Dallas, he goes to an auction, and he sees these molds sitting there, if you've heard my interview with him, he'd blow you away. He sees these big molds and they made something. He does some research. Turns out they made Commodore 64 computers at the place that close. He buys the molds for 200 bucks. So he spends $200 to buy these molds. And his scrap value on these things is probably a couple hundred bucks, right? 
He doesn't scrap it. He does some more research. Turns out there's a group of nerds that are into Commodore 64, probably IT. They're all into it. They're really, that's their thing. So he starts a Kickstarter campaign. I think it was $25,000 for the one that he, he got. When he sold the molds, I think he got $12,000 for the molds after he milked that for whatever. That's a visionary. Maybe, maybe. You're on your Commodore 64, aren't you? So I, again, I say you have to know yourself. You have to choose to be successful. You have to figure out the one that's you. Alright, that's right. No, I hate it. Don't. So, I'm going to give you two examples. Two examples here, okay? So this is Andy, and that's Chris Green's book, right? Andy does not equal good retail arbitrage. So about three years ago, we go out and we're, we met through Chris, and we go out and we, we're going to scan it in whatever store. Six minutes in, he's like, dude, I'm tired. I want to go sit down. I'm like, really? You know? Six minutes in. Now, he can do it, and he does do it around Christmas, lots of, like lots of us, and he probably has to do it sometimes. But that's not his thing, right? So does that mean he's a failure? Anybody want to call Andy a failure? Heck no, right? He does that. That's little Andy, little Leron, and little Nate, <laughs> right? And so we all know him as private label. They'll do combined almost $10 million in sales, the three of them, on real sales, real products, amazing products. They'll do well over seven figures in coaching and all that kind of jazz and services, and they're rolling out crazy services. He's figured that out. So his success was not retail art. That doesn't mean he failed. He's figured it out. So let's try this one, if you know this guy. So, Sam, let me ask you this question. I'm talking more. How do you... That's it. Don't mess with me. <laughs> How good of a retail art guy are you? Your whole team is here. Not good. Not good. I would, have, I would have thought you would have said you're probably pretty good, but I think over time, it wouldn't have lasted. Right, right? now, I can't do it. Right now, you can't do it. And so, what would have happened? Sam would have been looking at how to cue the shopping lines in the store better, right? He'd be negotiating a sale and lease back on the building, right? That's Sam, right? That's what he's thinking about, right? He's not going to, he can be scanning something. His attention span is so short. Does that mean he's a failure? No. He's a big I said. So, does that mean he failed? No. He can step back. And so, what does he do, right? He hires someone with much better hair. And you know what? If you spend five minutes with Uncle Jack, you'll understand why he's so successful. He's got the personality. Well, he's got the charisma. He's got a great attitude on life. And that's what Sam was successful at, is finding an Uncle Jackie and letting him do his thing. And so again, you have to know your strengths. You have to know how you're wired. And then adopt it. You go 10x, as Grant Cardone would say. So. That's a lot of stuff you're never going to read. Um, but you really have to have all these skills. You have to be, dare I say, good at them. Find the one that you're great at, and you will have real success. Okay? So it's a choice. I'll give you the slide. I promise. I won't stress. I will give you the printed, I printed version just in case. I promise. I can. I can go back. You can't read it. I'll give it to you. That's no stress. No stress. Okay. <laughs> so, how can you get in touch with me, right? So, I have a you know, website, right? Uh, we're on iTunes, we're on Google Play, we're on iHeartRadio, which I like. Podbay, Podbean, there's a million of those things. A little bit YouTube. We just launched our own apps these last week, so you can actually have an iTunes app or an Android app. It's all my own uh, object. And I hope that you continue listening, give me a chance to uh, get to know you, and if you want to recommend somebody, or if you want to talk to any of the people that I've interviewed, reach out to me, because I can get you in touch with them, and I think it's so worth it. Thank you very much.